Hi there, it's Afan Woods, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while, I gotta say, but we're back today because Florence and the Machine have released their fifth studio album titled Dance Fever. This is my first um, Florence and the Machine reaction, so just so you know, I've been a casual fan for around three years. So yeah, I know like most of their songs. That said, I have very little idea of what um, this album is gonna be like, because out of the singles, I've only listened to King. So yeah, this is going to be quite a blind reaction. Also, there are 14 songs in the track list. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, first song is King. And I gotta say, I haven't listened to it in a long time and I only listened to it like once or twice. So I barely remembered how it went. Okay, let's begin. Three, two, one. Yeah, it sounds like low key but optimistic so far. I am no bride. I am keen. I never knew my killer would be coming from within. Okay, so what I get from these lyrics is that she's trying to detach herself from terms such as mother or bride that um, place her as a being in relation to another, and she's claiming to be her own person, which is a king. Because a king is above everything and, you know. Because a bride can only exist with her husband and a mother can only exist with her children. Yeah, you get what I mean. I, I am king. Her vocal fry is iconic. Yeah, I love this outro. Yeah, it was like one sustained note. This part reminds me of um, Breaking Down, which is my favorite Florence and the Machine song. I didn't remember this outro. It sounds so romantic, but so nostalgic. The best way I can describe this song is roller coaster, like the verses have this vibe and then the chorus is real dark, it's like a valley. Then you have this bridge where she just bells her heart out and then the outro leaves you with this bittersweet feeling. Okay now, track number two, three. We're dancing now? I'm digging this production, it feels different. <laughs> okay. Picks me up, this is catchy. Picks me up, picks me up, puts me down. I love the way the production flows, like that transition was flawless. You're too sensitive, they said. Let's discuss this at the hospital, wow. Picks me up, puts me down. The way the drum stopped. The backing vocals. Just wow. I can't even keep up with the lyrics. <laughs> She's writing a lot about art and writing music in this album so far. <sighs> the piano. Wow, dare I say this is one of her best songs? Like, this might be my favorite on the album. I. It was just so euphoric. And I love the lyrics, is her addressing how she's auto-diagnosing herself with some kind of mental illness and also saying how she finds comfort and forgets about that when she's dancing. 
god, I genuinely love this song. I don't know if any of the rest of the tracklist is going to top it, but let's find out. Okay, track number three is called Choreomania. Okay, claps. Love the street. Okay, spoken voice. Maybe it was a poem and she turned it into a song. Something's coming, so out of breath. Okay, it's building up. I like the pace. Thinking about her. Okay. Her vocals. Okay, the drums are, are getting very heavy. The distortion in the vocals. Okay, I like that one sonically quite a lot. I just didn't get the meaning behind the lyrics. You can obviously let me know in the comments. I can see the theme of dancing as a coping mechanism though. Okay, next track, Back in Town. Oh, it's produced by Jack Antonoff. Sounds like we're slowing it down. Never really been alive before. Her voice sounds very in the front. It sounds as if it was recorded in a room because of that reverb. Okay. I wonder how she comes up with all of those melodies, like how she arranges the choir. <laughs> okay, this was a very different track. It was very centered around her vocals. The production only consisted in like some synths and a bass. Also, the vocals sounded quite raw. Okay, next song is called Girls Against God. Okay, an acoustic guitar. Ooh. When someone looks at me with real love, I don't like it very much. Kind of makes me feel like I'm being crushed. What a statement. Maybe she doesn't want to carry with the responsibility. Or maybe she feels it's always gonna go downhill at some point. Crying into cereal at midnight. <laughs> I like the storytelling in this last two songs. It feels very sincere. Yeah, these drums and these guitars sound like Jack Antonoff. Oh, and she said, oh god, she's probably talking to God directly. Ooh. Okay, it's slowing down. That's scary. Why she love it? This has nothing to do with, like, the key and the tempo of the song. Okay, a cappella outro. I met the devil. He gave me a choice, a golden heart or a golden voice. So she's claiming the golden voice, right? I don't know, I would say she has both, but... I wonder what's the story behind this song? Okay, so apparently both of these songs were written during the pandemic and discusses her anger and her frustration for not being able to connect with people. Yeah, so I guess she might be asking God um, what she's done to deserve this. Okay, next we have Dream Girl Evil. Well, did you miss me? Walk on water just to kiss me. 
This one feels dark. Ooh. That feels sexier. It sounded very intimidating at the beginning. I like the groove. Okay, we got a simple chorus. Did mommy make you sad? <laughs> yeah, this song definitely has a defiant tone. Okay, so apparently her lover has idealized her. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why she says, Kim, did I disappoint you? It cannot hold. Okay, the drums are getting more aggressive. This one kind of goes down to same as the last one. Okay. Right, so I like her attitude in this song. She's like, oh, you had a different idea of who I was? Well, that's on you, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, you better tell him, Florence. Okay, track number seven is called Prayer Factory. We're starting with vocal fry. Oh, I think this is an interlude. We have snaps? It sounds very eerie. Are you hearing those like dissonances? Okay, I would have to listen to it again, but I loved how the ending was abrupt but in a good way with that whoosh sound. Okay, so now this is Cassandra. Sounds quite sweet. Quite a desperate song. I cannot see you. This melody. Okay, drums. Wow. What a pessimistic song. Like, I could feel the sorrow and even though I'm not exactly sure of what she's singing about, I can feel that she's really lost. She just sounds faithless. And can we talk about the bridge that... Oh, like, it was fantastic. Now, track number nine, Heaven is Here. So bring your cigarette, draw me your what is this melody? What is going on? I'm not getting the tempo. Okay, I get it. If you want it. This is haunting. And every an escape rope tied around my neck. Tied around my neck, wow. What did just happen? Wow, it was quite it kept you guessing, definitely. I think it works in the album because it um, breaks the pace of the previous songs. It definitely catches your attention. Okay, next song is, I'm not gonna say this right, Daffodil. <gasps> the production makes it feel like a, some kind of ritual. Again. Again, you got this effect of like something slowing down, like, uh. That's the chorus. I'm not bad, I'm not good. I am king. The way the drums went back. 
in the mix. Where are we going? Is this the ending? Or yeah, it was the ending. So yeah, quite a mysterious song too. I loved the ending. Okay, track number 11, My Love. Sounds a bit mystical. What a long note. Hey! <laughs> I was missing the beats. Hey! Sounds a bit disco. All my friends are getting ill. Yeah, the pandemic is a very common theme in this album too. So tell me where to put on my life. Okay. My arms into the sky into Those sins. Ha! Tell me where to put on my life. The sky is empty, the billboards and my heart's empty, the sky is empty. Wait, there are 20 seconds left? Oh, it's going to transition into the next song, right? No, it didn't. Well, this is an acoustic guitar too, so maybe it did. Kind of sounds cohesive. Okay, so I liked My Love quite a lot, even though it was a bit too funky for me. I loved that she showed her ability to write hooks again. Okay, next song, Restraint, is an interlude. I guess it has no lyrics, let's see. Oh, it does. The way she's placing her voice. I like this melody. What did you, what did just happen? <laughs> I want to listen to the second half again. And the way she's choking here. Oh, okay, so in the first second of the next song, the bomb, you can hear her like finally being able to breathe. Okay, we like a concept. Let's listen to the bomb. Oh, sounds really cute. You said this could have been the best thing. You come back every summer like a carnivorous flower in us. I've blown apart my life for you and bodies at the floor for you and break me. She really builds that a soft as more atmosphere just to throw it away in the chorus. Tell me that I'm and we're back. Okay, fine. Baby, tell me. Sometimes you get the good, sometimes you get a song. What a line. This is a highlight for me. I don't know if people are gonna sleep on this, but I really appreciate it. It's one of my favorites. I loved the songwriting here. It was very clear. So there's this person that appears every now and then in her life, and they both know they want each other, but they are not really available. But if it ever happened, would it be that good, really? Or is it just that impossibility to be with each other that m keeps them hooked. I dig this one. And that ending lie, sometimes you get the good, sometimes you get a song. Just perfection. Right, so we're now moving on to the closing track, which is Morning Elvis. Okay, a simple guitar riff. Sounds sweet. When they dressed me and they put me on the plane to Graceland The bathroom I should have come with a warning I like this sonically a lot 
Okay, she's talking about a concert. The strings. To be spared. I love that vocals. Is that it? Okay, there's something else. The crowd. Oh, there's a song in the background, but I cannot really recognize it. What a sweet closing track. Well, more like bittersweet. Imagine her singing this live. It's going to be an experience. I wish I could get tickets to see her. Okay, now that the album is over, I'm going to tell you my trinity. So number three for me is the closing track Morning Elvis. I liked it a lot. In second place, we have The Bomb. And finally, my favorite song was definitely Free. I also liked King, Choreomania, Cassandra, and My Love quite a lot. I feel like the strong songs for me are at the beginning and at the end, but that might be just a me thing. I also liked that um, most of the interludes or short song were near the end, because therefore the listening process gets a lot easier for me. I can still hear the background vocals in my head from Morning Elvis go ha ha ha. Okay, so overall, I liked it. I loved the songwriting. The only thing I could point out is that um, the theme about heaven can get a little bit, a little bit redundant. But apart from that, it's just pure poetry. And when the lyrics got simpler or more descriptive, is where I got to connect more with her. I liked it sonically. I think that um, the songs in the middle have a similar sound to her old stuff. But especially with the more upbeat songs, you got these more um, fresh textures. And one thing's for sure, she delivered vocals all throughout the songs. And I don't think she's ever played with vocal fry quite this much. Like, she obviously used it in um, Big God. And it's quite of um, the signature vocal style in this album, I would say. Right, so that's it. Now it's your turn to let me know in the comments um, what do you think of the meaning is behind each song? What your favorite songs are? Yeah, just anything you like to point out. And yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye!